Yellowstone is a real threat. Experts say a magnitude 7 earthquake can and will hit the area already at risk from a supervolcanic eruption. As we know, in the 1950s it had a magnitude 7.3 earthquake in 1959, actually, August 17th. And Yellowstone tremors, from what the geologists are stating, are aftershocks of that earthquake. That earthquake was so big that it had an effect on the water wells in Hawaii, in the volcanic islands of Hawaii, 3,000 miles away to the west, in the middle of the Pacific tectonic plate. That's how much of an effect it has half a world away, generally speaking. It's not half a world away, but still, it's very far away. This is on Daily Mail by Cheyenne MacDonald. The experts say we're talking about USGS and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory geologists are the experts, and they state that Yellowstone will produce a major earthquake of at least magnitude 7 in the future, a magnitude 7.3 earthquake hit the park 59 years ago, August 17, 1959. The event 60 years ago also took the lives of 28 people. It effect, and the effects would be even worse today because there are more people living in the area. If that happens today, something similar. Scientists say the threat of a large earthquake is underappreciated compared to the eruption. We're not talking about Russia, we're talking about a huge earthquake there. Now, of course, that has an effect on the magma chamber. Any even slight earthquake, even a little bit further off, is feared because of the fact that a supervolcano, from what they've told us, does not act like a regular volcano. A supervolcano has a larger magma chamber, therefore a larger roof, which is uh, more in risk of cracking and therefore leading to an eruption. Fears of the supervolcano lurk at the heart of Yellowstone National Park, as we know, and they've long lingered in the backs of many Americans. It's been nearly 640,000 years since the last giant super eruption, and predicting when the next one will occur is a, uh, is, a, is a task that continues to uh, elude the geologists. Despite all the attention towards this volcano, experts monitoring the activity there around the clock, 24-7. Of course, this uh, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was not always there. It was established in the year 2001 only after a BBC, well, not BBC, a, a British documentary on Yellowstone came out uh, a few months before in the year 2000. And it spurred the US government to immediately open up a Yellowstone Volcano Observatory there, as they have in Hawaii and as they have in Alaska, for example. So basically, they have a lot of work to do because they've only been operating for about 18, 19 years. Uh, they go out for uh, field trips. They don't do that all year long because of the inclement weather. For example, they started, as of May 1st, sending out their teams. They sent a team to the new thermal area northwest of West Thumb Lake. West Thumb Lake is the part of the lake which is west. And the lake of Yellowstone is right over the caldera, which is, of course, the lake sitting on top of the magma chamber. Now, uh, even in March when they went to replace and uh, maintain some of their monitors, they showed us images of uh, four feet of snow they had to dig up in order to place the monitors there safely. Four feet of snow at the beginning of May. So you can imagine how inclement the weather is all year long. Anyway, uh, despite the direction, the attention directed towards this supervolcano, one of the most dangerous in the world, Experts monitoring the activity there around the clock say it is not an eruption we should be immediately concerned about. It's the earthquakes that we have to give attention to. And as we know, they've had a tremendous amount of earthquake swarms. 
Now, the, and it's, as they said in the past, it's not the basically the uh, the intensity of the earthquake. It's the amount, the quantity of earthquakes that really gets them agitated and flustered. The seismically active region produces about two and a half thousand small earthquakes annually, on average. The scientists say it's only a matter of time before it's rocked by a larger magnitude, magnitude 7 Richter event. Michael Poland, who is the scientist in charge at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, said the biggest concern we have for Yellowstone is not the volcano, it's with the earthquakes. It's an underappreciated hazard in the Yellowstone area. There can and there will be in the future a magnitude 7 earthquake. The, chamber, the chances of the major volcanic eruption at Yellowstone are currently considered to be low based on knowledge of three explosive eruptions in the past 2.1 million years. They had one uh, 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and the last one about 630, 40,000 years ago. Uh, uh, these, we're talking about the super eruptions because they had another one, another large eruption 70,000 years ago. And they had about 80, 000, uh, 80 eruptions since then. Now, uh, Jake Lowenstern, uh, who is a uh, Yellowstone Volcano uh, USGS geologist, also says that we're overdue for um, an eruption. Not a super eruption, but a, a major eruption by over a thousand years. Uh, so, there we go. The... Uh, Eruptions were the big ones, as we said, three in uh, two million years. Scientists estimate the yearly probability of another event, major event, to be one major, meaning super eruption, to be one in 730,000. Now, smaller lava flows have sprung up in between in the meantime. The last one occurred about 70,000 years ago. Large earthquakes, on the other hand, are far more common. The magnitude 7.3 earthquake that hit the park in 1959, 59 years ago on August 17, spurring a landslide and also giving us the aftershocks that are felt even up to today. Now, as far as earthquakes are concerned today, USGS does not show much activity. We've had a magnitude 3 in Soda Springs a few days ago. And uh, that was at a depth of about 9.4. We had another one about 2.2 in uh, North Montana. And those are just north and south, northwest and southwest of Yellowstone. Basically, that's it. We'll keep our eye on the Caldera Chronicles, which are out every week. And we'll update you on that shortly. Uh, this is just one of the cracks that we find from the magnitude 7.3 1959 earthquake in Hebden Lake. And you can see how huge that is. It cut the mountainside and it subsided a good uh, couple of yards, as you can see. Cut right through. Amazing. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue 
my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.